My name is Matthew Bryan. I'm a private detective, meaning I'm not a policeman, but when things get too complicated for them to figure out, they call upon me to solve it for them. I live alone. It's better this way. My last relationship didn't end in a good way, because I was always too busy with work. Always a new case to crack. My ex, Judy, had enough of this and decided to break up with me, but not in a normal way. She started having an affair with a colleague of hers. Me being a smart-ass detective, I figured it out without her telling me. It was like she wanted me to find out, to let me know I lost her because of how much of a self-indulged asshole I was. She left me for this guy, Adam. He was a huge fella, 6'4 and muscular, while well, I was only 5'9 and barely fit. Anyway, this was almost two years now. I moved on, I think. Everything throughout the last three years of my life changed, except for one thing. The case I was working on. The case that made no sense. The case I was so obsessed with solving that I spent a year not paying any attention to the only person I loved and forced them to leave me. The case of the vampire. I know what it sounds like, nonsense, but that's the best way I could describe it. Or at least, that's the best conclusion I could come up with. There was a vampire in the city. Two years prior to me taking the case, we've all started hearing cases of missing people Individuals who had little to no family would go missing for days, weeks and even months, only to be found in the most random and remote locations with their bodies drained of blood. But no bite marks, no signs of struggle, nothing except for a needle mark in their arms. Someone drained their blood while having them drugged. The numbers were increasing and it was getting out of hand and that's when the police decided to call me to investigate the case. I spent five months studying all the disappearances that occurred throughout the past two years, trying to find anything to link them together. For the first time in my life, I could not find anything newer than what I was briefed. All victims were individuals with little to no family. They go out at night. They're not seen for days or months until they're found in a remote location drained of blood with nothing but a needle mark. I couldn't even find a pattern or frequency for these occurrences or a motive. What was that thing or person and what's their goal? I spent the next seven months doing extensive research for any similar cases in any part of the world. I was amazed to find that this was a somewhat common case in many places, but with different time spans. It was like whatever was doing this was preying on people throughout history in secret until it became too frequent that the creature decides to move to another part of the world. I found accounts dating back to the 1600s, some European farm town where elders and children, mainly orphans, started going missing only to be found drained of blood. Needless to say, everyone at that time believed in demonic creatures and the like. And thus, I came to call this creature the Vampire. In order to be a good investigator, I always believed that I should let the paranormal and supernatural be up for debate when logic is nowhere to be found. I studied a lot of mythologies and folklore to be familiar with the supernatural. Not that I actually encountered mythological creatures or anything, but still I found this idea to be somewhat amusing. During those seven months, my life with Judy was deteriorating very fast. We barely spoke. I didn't know what was going on in her life. She'd be gone for long times without telling me where she was. I tended to busy myself with the research, however. It was a good escapism for me. I won't lie, a part of me misses her a lot. I miss that bright smile she always wore when I cracked the case. Those beautiful hazel eyes that I lose myself when I stared at. She was the prettiest and the sweetest girl I've ever met. She broke my heart when she left. She left without a word. One day I woke up and 
she was just gone. I don't blame her, to be honest. As much as I loved her and she meant the world to me, I was really bad at showing it. But that's all over. No need to reminisce about the past. Last night was one of the most bizarre nights I've ever had. I was invited to a friend's wedding ceremony. He was a mutual friend of Judy and Adam as well, so naturally I was expecting to see them. Not that I wanted to, but a small part of me was somewhat excited to see Judy again. I haven't seen her in two years. To my delight and utter disgust, I was seated next to the couple. We talked a little, some catching up. They moved to a new home. I did not have much to say. The case basically gone cold. Ever since the case been handed to me, the number of victims decreased drastically. It was like this vampire realized he was starting to get noticed. So he became very cautious and did not attack as frequent as he used to. That didn't mean I gave up on the case, however. I was still responsible for finding out who this thing or person was and bring them to justice. I did not want to talk about it in front of Judy and Adam. I didn't want her to see that I was still obsessed with the case that ruined our relationship. Moreover, I didn't want her to see me as a failure that couldn't solve the case. Also, I didn't want Adam to think that he was in any way better than me. I hated him with all my guts. And I hated myself even more. After all this time, I was still so self-centered and only thinking of myself. An hour later, everyone started to mingle with the other guests. I stood alone at a corner with a glass in hand. I wanted to be alone. I didn't expect things to go that way. I thought I was over it, but I couldn't stand seeing Judy with this guy. That's when I saw Judy coming at me with that lovely smile of hers. Enjoying the party? You know me, I'd prefer to bury my head in papers than being around all these people. I replied sarcastically. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, how have you been? Really? She sounded genuinely concerned. I just stared at her. I didn't know how to respond. She continued. I'm sorry for the way I left. I'm sorry for everything I did to you, but you really needed to wake up from that state you were in. I couldn't stand living with you, drowning in this case, and just watching you, not knowing what to do or, or how to help you. God, I'm sorry. Judy, you have nothing to be sorry about. It's okay. I'm well aware of the way I was and the way I became too self-centered. I understand your decision and I'm not mad at you if that's what you want to hear. I said, cursing myself for how stupid I sounded. I was beginning to turn around to end this awkward conversation. Then she hugged me and whispered into my ear. I left my diary in my drawer before leaving. Have you read it? I was shocked. What diary? I've never been through her stuff after she left. I only drowned myself even more in the case to escape the loneliness and hurt for the past two years. I was confused. W what diary? What are you talking about? I finally asked, pulling myself away. You'll have all the answers you need there. I hope you can forgive me. She said, voice breaking and tears beginning to fill her eyes as she walked away. What was going on? What answers did she mean? What did she mean with, I hope you can forgive me? I felt a mixture of confused emotions. And that hug. I really missed her. When I got home, I started looking for that diary she told me about. I always thought she left without a word. But now, this. I didn't know how to feel about it. I finally found the diary with a note attached to it. Written on the back, don't treat unless you're willing to believe it. I felt my heart pounding and the panic rising within me. Judy, 
Did you leave me another case? I opened the note, and it read. Dear Matthew, I'm sorry I'm leaving. I can't find the words to describe how much hurt and pain this is causing me, but I'm doing this to protect you. They will come for me sooner or later. The cases have become too goddamn popular, and I wouldn't want you to be there when they do. They leave no witnesses. They like to remain a secret to the outside world. This creature, this thing, this vampire you're searching for? It's me. I am sorry I never told you any of that, but it was for your safety. I'm leaving you not because of what you've become or how obsessed you are with this case, but because you're starting to draw too much attention and I don't want us to be associated. I hope you're safe, and I did the right thing. Please forgive me. I left this diary of mine for you because it will contain all you need to know about me and about this vampire thing. Goodbye, my love. Judy. I didn't know how to react to this. What I was reading. I was panicking and crying, and I wanted to scream my lungs out. My mind was breaking. I was conflicted. Judy. She was the one I've been chasing all this time. I know I called the creature the vampire, but that didn't mean I was looking forward to actually finding one. I thought it was some mad doctor stealing blood for some sinister reason. But it was much simpler. Just a vampire. A vampire on the run. A vampire that I've been living with for seven years. A vampire that I've loved with all my heart. This was much bigger than I thought. This could be the biggest case of all my life. It was proof that I was right to study mythology and folklore. I was right to keep the supernatural up for debate. It was sickening to know that it was also personal. I kept staring at that note for hours, feeling lost. Who was coming after her? Who was she protecting me from? They liked to stay secret. I had a million questions. Then, I looked at the diary. It was leather bound and very old. I wondered how it was still preserved after all this time. I was potentially holding a historical artifact that changes a lot of what we actually know. Something big was brewing up, and I was only scratching the surface.